The purpose of this video is to help teach how to properly use the split sleeper berth provision. To start, your truck must have a sleeper berth in order to split the berth. The sleeper berth status can be used anytime you spend time waiting in the sleeper berth portion of the tractor. You can go sleeper berth anywhere you want, provided you are in the sleeper berth. You can fulfill your 30 minute rule with the berth since it's not a driving status. Now when we talk about splitting the berth, you need to have two minimum numbers that equal at least 10. One of the berths must be at least two hours. It can't be less than two hours or it won't help you do any sort of splitting. The other must be at least seven hours and can be, the maximum can be higher, but if you only did a two hour berth, then you would need an eight hour berth at the end so that it adds up to 10. So you can do a combination of three hours in the berth and eight hours or four hours, and then you still need another minimum seven hours in the berth before it can combine. Let's take a look at one. This would be a proper way to split the berth. The first sleeper berth is for three hours, and the second berth is for seven hours. So to calculate your time, you want to see how much time you used before the first berth, provided you are doing a seven hour split later. So he starts at midnight and goes into sleeper berth at 6 a.m. So he has used six hours of his clock when he starts the first berth. He has driven for five hours. So his 14 hour clock following the three hour berth has eight hours. I get that by subtracting the six hours used before he started the berth from 14. 14 minus six is eight hours. Following the berth, I can work a maximum of eight hours. Instead, in this example, I work another six hours total and split the berth. Because I did three consecutive hours early, I only need to do a minimum of seven. The lowest number of the longer berth must always be at least seven hours, regardless if you do four or five hours in the berth at the last time. Once I finish my seven hour berth, I do not have all my available hours left. I again need to calculate the working hours before the second berth. I started that at 9 a.m. and I ended at 3 p.m. That means again I worked six hours. Since I worked six hours before that berth, I can only work a total of eight more hours before I would need to split the berth again with at least a minimum of three hours. Now let's give you an example of something that doesn't work. This is a log book here we're looking at where you can see he does a one hour berth then drives some, does another one hour berth and then drives some. Your berths must always be consecutive with a minimum number being two in order to achieve any sort of split berth. So you can do one hour in the sleeper berth but in no way will it help you pause your clock or let you do any math to change your clock. You still can only work 14 hours at that point and you can't split the berth because you haven't done anything when you make a minimum increment of one single hour twice. It has to be two consecutive hours minimum. Now we're gonna go through it one more time. So let's take an example here. I work nine hours, then I do a three hour berth. Well, if I work nine hours, that means I'm going to have five hours left because 14 minus nine equal five. Since I'd already used nine hours on the other side of the berth, I can only work up to an additional five before I need to finish the split by doing another seven hour sleeper berth. Once I do that seven hour split, if I did use all five hours on the other side of that split, I can work an additional nine hours before I need another three hour split again. And you can keep splitting the berth over and over again. What happens if you do a three hour berth, take a long break, and then do a 10 hour sleeper berth? Once you do a 10 hour sleeper berth in a row, it resets your whole clock.